Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. As we near the end of January, along with the one and only Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. We're into the heart of the Summit League basketball season. Jeffrey, we make the turn. NDSU sits at a tie for first place at 7-1 and one after the loss to Western Illinois uh, over the weekend. Now they get set for what should be a great game on Saturday down at Frost Arena with South Dakota State. We have not had a chance to visit in studio with everybody at home uh, about Taylor Braun's injury. It happened now two weeks uh, come Saturday with uh, a broken bone in his foot out four to six weeks. Obviously a first teamer for the Bison. They have 12 games remaining between now and the Summit League tournament going back to last weekend. How does this affect them, and what do you see their record down the stretch here? Good news and bad news for the Bison men's basketball team. The good news is they're 16-4 and four overall all right. and still, has a higher, still have a high ranking in the mid-major poll. The bad news, of course, is Taylor Braun. Now, are we uh, uh, going to give an editorial comment on how this injury happened? Absolutely. I know you're a TV sure. guy. Go for it. And you <laughs> want to defend your TV guy, uh, you know, brethren. Yes. But that cameraman, when Taylor Braun came down, yeah. was too close. You can't I don't disagree close. with you. I, I, he was definitely too far out. It was, I don't disagree with you there. There's a certain spot where you can be at, and he was too far out, yes. I don't know if that warrants an apology from Mid-Continent or something, <laughs> but, you know, maybe they have talked. I, I'm not privy to those conversations, yeah. but uh, come on. You know, you don't have to get that close to the action to be that close to the action. A lot of people want to be that close. I'll say that. It was as, unfortunate. As, as, as someone to shoot. Yes, absolutely it, it is. And, and, you know, you can draw any conclusions you want from that. Okay, so now going forward from that, well, well, we'll see. Recover. Yeah, we'll see. I, I'm looking at the South Dakota State game on Saturday as a nice benchmark to see, okay, can this team rebound from this Taylor Brown injury? It's been two weeks. Mm -hmm. They've had time to work through some things. They've had time to work through the rotation. Uh, where does, uh, you know, Mike Felt work in, yeah. work in this rotation? Uh, is Nate Zastro going to play more off the bench? Uh, I'll be curious to see how they do it in front of a big crowd. Now, the first game here was over Christmas break, and you and I were both stunned. There was 5,100 people there. It was the biggest crowd they had at the BSA in three years. NDSU played motivated that night. They contained Nate Walters in that first matchup, and you know the Jacks are going to be uh, eager for some payback on Saturday. And NDSU has to prove that it can play well in South Dakota if they're going to uh, extend their playing season no beyond doubt. March because, as we all know, yeah. the Summer League Tournament is in Sioux Falls, which is right down the road from Brookings. I think a good step, win or lose, they got to show that they're competitive in Brooklyn Saturday. Tell me, how much do you think the hangover from the Western Illinois game is? Because you know how Jim Mullenhery's team loves to play. I mean, they love to slow it down, muck it up. Uh, and this is after NDSU won by nearly 40 at IUPUI uh, in the road game before. Basketball kids, I think, are pretty resilient. Mm -hmm. I don't see this affecting them too much. And it's not like the game is two days later or True. anything. It is yeah. over a week later. And uh, they've had a week to prepare for the Jackrabbits. I, I can't imagine Western Illinois being on the minds of anybody. You were at the game last year at Frost Arena. SDSU blew them out of the building. They won by nearly 30. How does it change this year? That was with Taylor Braun in the lineup last year as well. Well, Corey Brown, who, by the way, was absent against Western yeah. Illinois with uh, sickness, uh, is, is a good start defensively. You have to get on Nate Walters. I thought Corey Brown did a, a very admirable yeah. job for a freshman. He's big enough, he's long, and now let's see what South Dakota State does to counter that. Twelve games they have left. What's a reasonable record you would care to, to predict for NDSU down the stretch run without Taylor Braun? I think if you go 9-3, and 8-4, and four, something like that. But yeah. uh, more important, if those last four or five games are done with some uh, um, fluidity yeah. and some uh, you know, forcefulness heading into the playoffs, I think that's what you're looking for. You look right now, their RPIs at 57. The Bracket Buster matchup is coming up down the stretch. There's a good chance they could play a Missouri Valley team or a West Coast Conference team. That could really set the benchmark of how good this team is. They beat the Jacks, and certainly I think they're going to get on television if they yeah. beat SDSU. I think that's what you're looking for in the yeah. Bracket Buster, right? Yeah. That's the number one goal is to get on television. Get on TV. Much like the MAC football on Tuesday <laughs> nights. You want to get on the tube. <laughs> Perfect transition to segue us as we're less than for. two weeks away uh, from signing day. NDSU, as we tape this, just landed a 16th verbal commitment out of the state of Kansas as they get a linebacker, Matt Plank, who's 6'2", 215 pounds, had some interest from Kansas and Kansas State. This is a state that NDSU just started going into a couple years ago. Obviously, the byproduct of the game, uh, the win over Kansas. It's had mixed results so far because we haven't seen really a whole lot of guys come out of that. Your thoughts so far? They have 16 guys now, uh, hoping between 18 and 20 for this class. I think the big position is linebacker because yeah. I think at least two linebackers next fall are going to have to step in and play right, right away in a backup role because of attrition and, and just people being effective at that position. I look for uh, Matt Plank to give it a good yeah. shot. 
uh, you know, the kid from Omaha, Nick DeLuca, yeah. who, uh, by the way, is rather big at 6'4", <laughs> 230. I don't know if he stays as we look at him yeah. right here. I don't know if he stays at linebacker. Look at him. I mean, he's a runs well. He, is that body going to be a DN? We'll see. You have uh, Alex Hahn from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Yep. and James Another big kid. Yes, and James Gate. Uh, I think he was a fast kid out of Menominee, Wisconsin. Also, Chase Morlock. Yep. Does he stay at linebacker or stay at running back? Does he go to linebacker? I don't think that question will be answered until next fall. I think that's something, yeah, exactly, that will be debated about come fall camp. But I don't disagree with you at all that two of those guys got to play right away. Unless they find uh, they go through the junior college ranks, which they did a couple years ago and got and plucked a great one in Chad Wilson, who came in and obviously starred in that Kansas game in his first game. Uh, I think some of these guys are going to have to play right away just because you look at the amount of snaps that Olsen, Beck, and Little John played. It had to be near 95% this year, throughout the whole year. And I think you're going to have Ashley Thornton in a, in a backup yeah. role next year, too. But after that, I think the jury's out. Uh, you don't know. Bison Antonio are not Rogers afraid play. to take a, no. a shirt off a player right away. Especially if they think they can help. Colton right. Eagle comes right to mind. Grant Olson. And Grant Olson right comes right to mind as well for uh, in the past for what they've done there. They have one quarterback they've locked up so far. That's Cole Davis out of Missouri. One running back. That's Morlock and a wide receiver. Uh, and Tyler Rice also out of Nebraska. What else are you looking at here position-wise? They've loaded up on the offensive line and especially on the defensive line uh, in this class. I think you look at another linebacker. Mm -hmm. Especially because those guys make good special teams players too with uh, their athleticism. Maybe, I don't know if you need another running back or not. We don't know about Matt Jones and his concussion yep. issues. Uh, Darius Anderson, they have a lot of high hopes on who will be a sophomore next yep. year. You have the two starters coming back, Correct. you know, Jury and, and Crockett. Crockett. Yep. Derek Lang will be back as Der well. Derek Lang will be yep. back. There's, there, there's a lot of depth there. Uh, but you like to bring in a guy every year. You think that? Well, that's they found that out with quarterback because right. they obviously started doing that, and I think running back is something uh, that they want to strive for. And as Morlock well. may be the guy. And who knows? Yeah. It could exa exactly be right. Now, the debate that we've had, uh, we've talked with Craig Bull about this, and I know we will again as we get near uh, signing day, is how the national championship runs. The last two have affected recruiting because in December, late November, December, Jeff, that's the bread and butter of when coaches are out, they're in homes, they're talking to high school uh, prospects about going to their school. Obviously, NDSU hasn't had been able to do that because they've been game planning uh, for the playoffs. Now, granted, we won't see the proof in this pudding, maybe not this year, but maybe 2014. Help? Hurt? What do you think? Well, there's no substitute, I don't think, for being in a kid's living room in December right. while the other team is playing. I mean, is, the, is a kid in Kansas paying attention to NDSU? Probably not. You know, I mean, they're not on, on ESPN working out every day. No. So, you know, it's like going to going to trial, and you're the prosecutor, and there's no defense. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. But also, I guess the, you know, the glass half full side of it would say, well, they're out playing on ESPN in the national semifinal game on a Friday night, and then the national championship if, game. If you can get the kid to be patient and wait, and if you can get in their, uh, uh, you know, their head that yeah. you're going to be there, wait for us after the season, and I think you could be effective. But they also had a lot of commits before the They did. Season. They also, that was a different strategy they right. did. And they, they actually had, I believe, eight before the season even started. That's something you and I remarked about way back in September. Wow, this is the most uh, that we can remember they had done that. And that, that was done, and that strategy is yeah. done on purpose. It's something they learned from the last two years being in the playoffs that if you're going to be playing in December, you might have to be a little proactive on the front end. Right. Now, the other side of it is, you may be gambling a little bit once in a while. True. And also there's some guys who might get hurt that right. you don't know before even the season begins, their senior season of high school. Uh, you don't know how well they're going to come back from that. I don't think NDSU's afraid of that, though. They've stuck with Deshaun Warren. They he did. was hurt his senior in high yep. school. He's been hurt this year uh, in fall camp and, and, and coming back. They yep. hope to get him back for spring ball. Um, I think they're willing to be patient in, in situations like that. It's going to be fun to see over the next couple weeks of how this uh, recruiting class finishes out for NDSU as they figure they still have about three or four guys they're looking on. They're oh, also it's looking getting at, exciting, isn't it? Is. it? Well, they're also looking at one guy as well, the Bismarck running back in Lane, Lane Joes, who was the North Dakota Player of the Year. And before we go, I, I, I have to mention this, that they have, got, they have closed the borders off in North Dakota, that they have any player that they've wanted, outside of maybe Jake Miller, the star running back from Bismarck who's played at UND, uh, you look at Travis Beck, Ryan Smith, uh, Andrew Oakland, all those guys have ended up landing at NDSU, and that's something that, uh, that Craig Bolt sought out to do way back when. Well, uh, before you get on the field, you got to win those battles. That's, that's true. That's true. So we'll see what happens here over the next couple of weeks. Big weekend as Jeff is actually heading down to Frost Arena for the coverage of the Bison and Jack game. We'll have much more on that coming up next week as NDSU gets set to meet up with South Dakota State. Much more recruiting coming up over the next two weeks. The latest edition, everyone, of the Bison video blog.